Hi folks, this is Doc Severson. You are listening to the Theotrade Nightly Report for Tuesday, June 28th. We'll start out tonight looking at the S&P 500 ETF or the Spider. So after I last talked to you on Thursday night, right before the British referendum vote was known, everything was still heading higher up to that point. Well, what a surprise since then. So let's take a quick look across the time frames. On the monthly chart, we're still looking at a massive consolidation, fitting within about a 300 point range on the full S&Ps. So until we break out of this range between about 1800 on the downside and 2130 or so to the upside, this is gonna remain a huge consolidation zone and is gonna be kind of a, a cage match amongst traders. So we're going to see all of this activity and all this volatility kind of contained by this these ranges between 1800 in the bottom, 2130 or so on the top, and some massive catalyst is going to have to come along to break us out of that range. So now let's move down to the weekly chart. And really what we care about on the weekly chart is this big swing that we've seen really since the beginning of the year. We had a double test at the bottom down here just above 1800 and we have seen a massive 300 point swing off of the bottom. Now, as you can see here, we are starting to show some weakness. So after the initial set of higher highs, higher low, higher high, what we have seen so far is now that drive from a higher high, which was in early June, to a lower low. So now the question mark is, are we going to run into another January move again like this where we go screaming down to 1800 or is is it different this time? Well, this candlestick alone is already very different from what we saw back in August of 2015 as well as January of this year. We didn't see any candlesticks like this where we saw massive buying support coming in on a day like today. So with this in mind, we have not yet seen a change in polarity to the downside. So this is not a downtrend. All this is is just a swing down on the weekly chart. However, when we go from a higher high like this to a lower low, what it does is increases the probabilities that the next high will be some form of lower high and we could roll over again. Now this could be very mild on the way down or it can be very vicious. We don't know that yet. We can't look in the future and see what's going to happen. All we can do is base our trades based on the probabilities. And again, my read on this says when we go from a higher high to a lower low like this, that kind of breaks the cycle. Any bounce back up, whether or not it's a dead cat bounce or whatever you want to call it, usually ends up more often than not ending up being just another lower high until we do finally end up bottoming out. Now the support that was found yesterday was actually at a very important point because if we draw the fibs from the very beginning of this cycle all the way up to the top here, we are going to see that price was slightly undercut the 38.2, but it is so far very important that it holds that 38.2 because it's right around that round number resistance level, which on the full S&Ps was just about 200 or 2000 on the full cash S&Ps. So now let's go over to the daily chart. This is where all the action is, and this is where most of their people spend their time watching the chart. So without the benefit of the context of the monthly and the weekly, now if we just look at the daily chart, we say, well, this is a screaming bear market, and we have no context of what it is. All right, so yes, it is a strong move over the period of three days, and yes, we do have a change in polarity to a downtrend in this case. So from a market that was making higher lows and higher highs, right? Higher lows, higher highs from here. We printed a very strong lower high last Thursday evening and then boom, we've made obviously a lower low below this level. And so we have a change in polarity to a downtrend on the daily chart. But as you can see, this whole change in polarity, this whole downtrend on the daily chart, all this is doing on the weekly chart, just pulling this down. Okay, so we're not gonna have a full we're not going to have a full reversal until we see something happening on the weekly chart, which does the same thing as well, too. Reversals propagate from one time to another. So if we have a reversal at the daily chart, if that's all it ends up doing, 
then the possibility still exists that we could start to see something like this. Now again, I think a V bottom here and a slingshot higher is very unlikely, but still anything could happen at this point. We don't know what the future holds. So one of the things that we started to do is to sell credit spreads here. So I, this is what I like to do when we see a big shock in implied volatility, although we haven't even gotten up to a 30 level on the VIX yet. So things are still very, very muted so far and kind of odd actually. So we we're able to, for the August cycle, sell 175s. So we sold the 175s down there, which is well below well below this very, very strong multi-year support. So anytime we're able to do something like that and get something outside of that. So what I'd also like to do is if and when we're able to bounce back up to a reasonable level of resistance and allows me to get trades above this level, I'm going to complete the iron condor and end up with something that's going to be on the order of over 300 points wide perhaps about 400 points wide by the time that we're done with this one. So what happens from here? What happens from here? Well, let's look again at the daily chart now. And so this is where we can start to apply some of the same analysis to this one by flipping things around. And if we start at the top in this case and go all the way down to the bottom of this swing, okay, we can see that Typically what we see is these moves will find a way to either pull down at the 38.2, perhaps go to the 50%, or maybe as far as the 61.8. In my way of thinking, just looking at this chart, I think the, the main level of resistance is going to be somewhere around 205 to 206 before I'm going to start selling into this. Now again, we could roll over tomorrow, we could blow past all of these, I don't know. But right now, just looking at this, it looks like to me the main pivot that's up here is just over 205. And this is where I'm going to be looking to not only set up my credit spreads above all time highs up here, but also taking some bearish debit put spreads to the downside in the short term. Now, the one thing I will say before I get off of the S&P is that we are starting to see the S&P do this. So this is a broadening pattern. You can see it a little bit here on the weekly chart as well, too. So this is what you're seeing is the volatility. The realized volatility is starting to expand like this. And we're starting to see more energetic moves. And this is kind of a result of all of this consolidation that we've seen for the past year and a half. We have a tremendous amount of potential energy right now, and I think it's starting to get heated up. And this is what we typically see, is we see these types of megaphone patterns as the realized volatility starts to cook up and starts to really fly back and forth. And usually this ends up being a bearish outcome from this, but I think this is still far from over yet before it's set up. All right, let's look at a couple of commodities of interest here. Here's GLD. Again, my read on GLDs is still in a monthly downtrend. This is just a monthly swing up. It's not a full change in polarity to an uptrend yet. All we need for that to occur is for the price to dip back down and establish some form of higher low before it rallies at that point. So we're still ways away from that one. You can still see on the daily chart, though, we're starting to see the same kind of effect here where we're seeing the volatility start to expand. The realized volatility is expanding in this sort of megaphone pattern. And we're starting to see the swings get more and more exaggerated here. And again, this is just sort of a, a kind of a symptom of what we're seeing across markets is that we're getting these, you know, more fear, uncertainty and doubt kind of creeping into markets and creating situations where things get too negative and that gets unwound to the upside and then the next shoe drops and then that brings things down again and we just start to careen out of control. So I know what you're thinking that the summer is when the volatility is supposed to contract and everything's starting, supposed to be getting boring, but it's exactly the opposite is happening right now. And this is, um, this is actually something similar to what I've seen in many of the summers. If you go back over the last few summers, We've actually seen a lot of volatility during the summer. So I think just anticipating a slow, boring summer, kind of like the one that we had last year. Last year was a very choppy, slow summer. 
until we got to the end of August, but we may be starting to see another summer like we did back in 2007, perhaps, which was a very volatile summer. Even 2008 was a very volatile summer. We saw tons of volatility in 2009. 2010 had a massive amount of volatility in there. 2011 had a massive amount of volatility in the summer, especially after, after we got into August. You know, come to think of it, actually only 2015 was a really flat year. I'd say 2011 and 2015 were flat during the summer until we saw some big, big, big volatility kick into gear in the month of August. So I don't think we're, uh, I think we're getting an early start on that right now so far. And I'll finish out today by looking at the dollar. Now don't go to sleep on the dollar because if the dollar starts to rise here, and again, one of the reasons why the dollar was rising, of course, is because the pound and the euro were going down, right? So that all makes sense. But this is, in effect, just a, a multi-month long flag pattern up here, which is essentially a bullish consolidation pattern that usually shows up about halfway through a move. So once we get an exhaustion on a move, and we I remember this occurring in early in 2015, right? So this, we may thrash around here for a little while longer, but if we start to break out of over 100, then we're on the next leg of this one. So watch for this change in polarity. Reversal start from the inside out. So right now we've already seen the reversal back up to the upside on the daily chart. And what we need to see is kind of the same thing happening on the weekly chart. And then we could see higher highs and higher lows showing up on the monthly chart as well too. So don't go to sleep on this one. If we do start to see the dollar rally higher, that's going to put a lot more pressure on those multinationals that do a lot of business overseas with a rising dollar. It's going to be tougher for them to do business with. That hasn't exactly held back the stock market that much lately, but it could reach critical mass at that point. Again, the more uncertainty that we see overseas, the more that they will seek the U.S. dollar as a safe harbor. Okay, guys, that is it for today's report. So far, we've seen nothing more than a dead cap bounce off of the bottom. And the, the volatility will continue until morale improves, right? So hope to see you in the Theo Trade chat room. Thanks for listening to tonight's video.